Today I'm making a droplet for what's called an Adir patch. If you're using 360 cameras, you're going to see these ugly little blemishes that kind of hang out uh, where your tripod is. What I'm going to show you is how to get rid of those and a bunch of them on all of your photos in a very quick and efficient way. Uh, this is the Nadir patch Photoshop watermark droplet. I started off doing it one by one by one by one by one. It just took forever. So it's about a 10 minute exercise so that you never have to do it again. So we're going to go through and use a couple different tools. Uh, the first one is a website uh, called nadirpatch.com. This is where we're going to size and augment the logo that we want to put on our photos so that um, basically when it's produced in a 360 environment that it'll actually look like, uh, you know, the patch on the bottom, which you'll see in a sec. So let's get started. I see a lot of people using round logos for the nadir patches. Um, I think they just seem to work a little bit better um, in the 360 viewers. So I would uh, recommend using a round logo um, at about 4096 pixels by 4096 pixels. This is because it's uh, the 4K size. So if you're doing videos as well um, and you're outputting at 4K, then you know this might as well admit, you, know, you might as well use this size. Um, you want it to have uh, some transparency. Um, basically, you don't want the white background, so you will want to save it as a PNG um, when you create your file. Um, after you have this file, we will go to nadirpatch.com where we'll turn your uh, circular logo into a horizontal banner that will be applied to all the photos. What we want to choose for uh, still photo watermarks is the sphere patched option. And what we do here is we just add our logo, the PNG from Photoshop that we saved. Drop that right here. So our logo has uploaded. Now we want to add our equirectangular projection, aka your 360 photo. When you choose a photo, it doesn't matter because you're going to change it anyway. Uh, you're going to actually crop just the watermark banner out of that photo. So just pick any 360 photo that you have. Uh, it doesn't matter which. Boom, there we go. So we're going to download this file. And after it's downloaded, we're gonna quickly open it in Photoshop and just crop out the image so all we have is the watermark. So it's pretty simple. Just gonna go get rid of everything except for our logo. And we want it to be pretty pixel perfect. So even that's a little bit off. Cool. All right, got it. So that is uh, our logo basically stretched out horizontally. So after we have this, we're going to just save this as a PNG or JPEG. It doesn't actually matter because it's just going to be the file that's placed on top of all of our photos when we automate and create the droplet. Now that we have our Nadir patch artwork made, we're going to start making a droplet. And this is the tricky part. So if you get kind of lost, don't worry. Uh, just kind of backtrack and find where you went wrong. If all else fails, sometimes it's easier to completely delete an action set and just start from scratch. So what we want to do when we start is we want to have a file already open. This is going to be the, the file that we record the actions on so that when we want to apply the watermark to any file in the future, we just drag it and drop it on the droplet. So we'll call this Action 360. Awesome. Why not? Start recording. All right. Now that we're recording, we want to drag and drop our file that we exported from nadirpatch.com right on on here. It should snap into place. If it doesn't, you want it to be along the bottom edge. 
uh, perfectly centered. There shouldn't be any room around the edges, so uh, you know you may need to zoom in pretty close to make sure. Uh, I think mine's on snap to grid, so it just does it automatically. All right, so we've placed the image. Now what we want to do is we want to flatten it. So we want to go to layer, flatten image. Cool. And now that allows us to save as. We definitely want to save as a copy. We don't want to overwrite our original files ever. So always save as a copy. And let's pick a folder we want to save these to. I just save them to the marked images folder. That way they show up here loose and I can create a folder and drag them all into it. So we'll put them in marked images as a copy, same format, save. And we want to just OK this. Everything looks cool there. Final thing we want to do, we don't want to click stop yet. We want to close this file. So as we close, we want to click don't save. OK, so we recorded everything we needed. Now we just need to open it back up and actually stop recording because <laughs> we're still recording right now. So as you can see, it says close here and then open here. Well, this is reopening the file. So let's go ahead and stop recording. We're going to select open, and we're just going to go goodbye. Delete the open. Our, our actions are all recorded here. So we placed the Nadir patch, we flattened it, we saved it as a copy, and then we closed it. And we chose not to save again. Uh, that was pretty easy. Now we'll go up to automate and create a droplet and we basically put those actions into action um, this is just where you want to save the droplet mine's in the watermark here so I've got it 360 uh, still 360 I'll just save over the top of it that's fine sure um, I have these two check suppress uh, file open options and suppress color profile warnings um, I unchecked override action save as because I did that manually and it's going to be saving into marked images like we saw before. So destination folder, document name, extension. I leave this stuff like exactly the way it is here. Um, it works and I don't touch it. But, uh, stop for errors. Uh, you can log errors of file. There shouldn't be any errors. So snapshot this and make sure yours looks like mine at this point and then we're okay good to go now to test to make sure it works so we should be able to drop um, any of our images let's grab some that aren't marked so we'll do, we'll do three at a time so you can see how fast it works um, and all we do is we drag and we drop them to the new droplet and they should appear in here loose and in the background what it's doing is it's running through the actions that we just recorded and that's it it's done uh, this image was already open so it what it does is it opens it applies the patch and then it actually closes it saves it and then closes it and they're all here as copies and there you go, you can see, well, unfortunately, my mug was not out of the frame. I was holding it too low, but here you go. Uh, yeah, there's still a little bit of my hand there, but for the most part, it's, you know, it's well hidden. Uh, and there you go as well. So now the true test to see if our file format is correct is to go to Facebook and try to add some photos. So we'll try to add the photos we just created and see if it recognizes it. It does, which is awesome. So if you see this little thing here, that means that it's still a 360 photo. If you save it for web as a JPEG, for some reason, uh, it loses its indication, loses, you know, the file. Somehow Facebook doesn't recognize it as a 360 image, even though it is. So. Uh, if you uh, 
do everything and go in to upload it and test to see on Facebook if it recognizes it as 360 and for some reason it just kind of uploads it like like you see here then that means you probably saved the file as a different format JPEG or maybe you saved it as a PNG or something but but that's it so um, it's uploading here it's all working we're cool um, now anytime you want to create a watermark 360 image all you need to do um, is drag and drop it onto your droplet admittedly that took longer than I thought it would to make a tutorial uh, it is a bit complicated one thing I do want to point out is that uh, this is not the same process uh, if you're wanting to watermark video. Uh, video, mar video is a bit different. Um, I'll probably put a tutorial together for that as well. As you can see outside, uh, when I started this tutorial, it was a bit lighter, um, but it's done. And uh, I know that in these steps, there are a lot of places that you can screw up. Um, I think the most important part of it is to remember that and once you have that little uh, banner that goes along the bottom of your 360 images, after that it's all about the droplet and following the actions. And if you match uh, the rules as, as uh, I showed on the tutorial, you should be totally golden. And um, you know, I really hope it works. Uh, it, it took a long time, not just to figure out the right way to do this, but to put it together in a tutorial to maybe help other people. If I did a crappy job, I'm sorry. I'm not sure how well this tutorial is going to fly. So uh, if it works for you, awesome. Thumbs up, um, comment, let me know. Uh, if it's confusing and you think it almost worked for you, comment and tell me what I could do to make it better. I can always add in more titles and stuff and uh, other clips to kind of make it easier for people to follow. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like it uh, or uh, whatever. Thanks. Bye.